uh, good morning friends first of all i thank the sandhan for giving me this wonderful opportunity to deliver a talk on ravinath tagore's poem live this chanting singing and telling of beers my friends you must be knowing something about ravinath tagore he was a great philosopher educationalist poet and social reformer of india he wrote many poems plays short stories in english that appealed all the indian masses and you must be knowing that he won the nobel prize for literature in 1913 and he got nobel prize for gitanjali in english i must say here that ravinath tagore talks about his indian experiences his scientific vision in his poems and some of the poems are where the mind is without fear authorship face to face freedom lamp of love strong mercy senses salutation live the chanting singing and telling of beads poems deliverance where is this deliverance to be found our master had joyfully taken upon him the bonds of creation he is with us all forever come out of thy meditations and keep aside thy flowers and incense what harm is there if thy clothes become tattered and stained finally in the last two lines the poet says stand him meet him and stand by him in toil and die sweet of bro friends now listen to the audio clip of the poem that i am going to play it's a beautiful poem you are definitely going to enjoy it leave this chanting and singing and telling of beads Whom dost thou worship in this lonely dark corner of a temple with doors all shut? Open thine eyes and see thy god is not before thee. He is there where the tiller is tilling the hard ground and where the pathmaker is breaking stones. He is with them in sun and in shower, and his garment is covered with dust. Put off thy holy mantle and even like him come down on the dusty soil. Deliverance Where is this deliverance to be found? Our master himself has joyfully taken upon him the bonds of creation. He is bound with us all forever. Come out of thy meditations and leave aside thy flowers and incense. What harm is there if thy clothes become tattered and stained? Meet him and stand by him in toil and in sweat of thy brow. Now we move on to the discussion. Let us discuss the first stanza of the poem. To whom does you think the poet is addressing the poem? Yes, of course, right. You must be thinking that the poet is addressing to the priest. Why the poet is addressing to the priest and the devotee of God? You know? Yes. The poet is addressing the priest, the priest who is worshiping the god in the temple he has closed all the doors in the morning and he is sitting lonely in a dark corner do we really find god in the temples do we really find god in the churches that is the question that we need to ask the poet in the last line of the poem says addresses to the priest to the devotees that they have to open their eyes and they have to see that god is not in temple my friends you must be wondering that what is the philosophy of ravinath tagore what philosophy of life that he is talking about what is he saying about god let us see what he has to say in the next slide he says that 
God is there where the tiller is cultivating the hard ground. God is there where the path maker is breaking the stones. If you want to find the God, you find God in nature. If you want to find God, you can find God in the hard work of the farmers and the path makers. They work very hard, day and night. And you can find God when these farmers, these path makers are working on the field and God is in them. Do you, do you really believe that God would be there in the farmers, in the path makers? Yes, it is in their hard work. And it is this hard work that is behind all the development. You may go to Gujarat, you may go to Maharashtra, you, go, you may go to Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab and any other state. You find that the farmers and path makers and laborers work hard. And that's why the poet is seen addressing the priest, the priest who does nothing, just sits an idol. And what is the poet saying to the priest? O priest, put up thy holy mantle. And what then the priest has to do? He has to go to the field and work like the farmer and work like the path maker. He has to break the stones and cultivate the land and there only he can find the God. Now in different religions, in the third stanza of the poem, the poet talks about deliverance and you know that it means salvation. After death, the soul leaves the body behind and it is believed that sometimes it goes to heaven, sometimes it goes to hell, depending on the actions that the person performed on the earth. Do we? Do we should follow this philosophy? Should we believe in it? The poet raises the question here. When we talk about salvation, we must have to think about what salvation is, how it is to be obtained, and what other religions have to say about salvation. When we see and study Hindu religion, it says salvation is mukti, moksha. If you want salvation, there is a way out and that is, you must have to follow the religion. You must have to follow the duty, the work that is allotted to you in the caste system, in the Chaturvarna system. You must not question. You follow the philosophy. You, philosophy, you follow the task, the work that your earlier generations have been following for the last many years. So you may be a cobbler, you may be a carpenter, you may be a gardener, you may be a potter and that you must continue without complaining, without questioning and that's the way to take your salvation. Do we need such salvation? When we talk about Christianity, Jesus Christ says, I am the one living, you come to me, I can take you to God and you can get moksha. When we talk about Muslim religion, you must be knowing what is the philosophy of salvation in Muslim religion. It says that Muhammad Paigambar is the ultimate authority. He says, you come to me, I can take you to God. There is no other one who can take you to God. And when we come and talk about Buddhist philosophy, yes, Gautam Buddha does not anywhere claim the authority, the supremacy. He says, I am not Mokshadatta. I am Margadatta. The meaning is, I am not going to offer you salvation, but I can show you the path of virtue. I can show you the cause of the pains and miseries. And I can make you to follow the path of virtue. I can make you to follow humanity, that all are equal. And that is what we need to realize. And that is perhaps what Ravinath Tagore is talking here in his poem, Live the Chanting. He is talking about rational philosophy. He is talking about rational ideology. And you know, even our Indian constitution, it inculcates, it wants the governments in different states 
to inculcate scientific temperament through education policies in our country has it happened perhaps not maybe because the educational institute colleges are in the hands of the elite class and they have been seen following their ways of life their traditions their rituals and where is the way to go to the scientific world that the japan is looking for the china is looking for and where america is in the next stanza the poet talks about meditation is this the way to get salvation we need to think that we worship god according to ravinat tagore it is a blind faith blind ritual and even the poet like nisim eskil talks about superstitions in his poem night of the scorpion i would like to tell you a story here that you must be that you must have heard of and what is the story yes one day his mother was stung by a scorpion and the news reached the neighboring houses and the people living in the neighborhood started coming to the house they carried with them candles lamps and finally they reached to the house of the poet they made a circle around the poet's mother who was moaning and crawling from one side to another she was crawling with pain now it is very important it is very important to observe what the neighbors say here they said that the poet's mother might have committed some sins in her previous life in her previous birth and that's why the scorpion stung her some of them said now as the scorpion stung her there is going to be the perfect balance of the evil and the good some said now she is going to be relieved from all sins and when she takes next birth she will not have she will not have to suffer now here in this stanza of the poem the poet is saying to the priest addressing to the priest that the priest you come out of the meditation what you have to do you have to leave aside the flowers and incense and what harm is there if you go to the field cultivate the land go to the field break the stones and what harm will befall to you nothing just your clothes will become dusty they may get tattered and stained but oh you praised you can find god in the hard work of the farmers and the path makers now let us have some questions for discussion uh the first question i would like to say how long have we been following the blind rituals the second question is why have we been the believers of the superstitious notions as for my belief as for my information we have been following the blind rituals the blind faiths for centuries together when the arya people came you know they came to india they defeated the natives implemented the chaturvarna vyavastha that is the caste system and made people to follow all the traditions ritual and that is how people have been following the superstitious notions in the country for thousand centuries do we really get salvation that is the third question or is it a myth invented by orthodox people yes now you must have to think because the poet talked about deliverance where is this deliverance to be found and the poet has answered that it cannot be found anywhere if you want to find it you must have to go and read what gautam buddha has to say about the philosophy of life the next question we can take for discussion have you ever heard priest committing suicide but farmers do commit suicide when we are going to give social status and dignity for the physical labor work that the workers and farmers put the priest just sits an idol does nothing just offers puja performs puja and what do we find he just sits does nothing whereas the farmers work very hard 
but what do they get in return you must be listen you must you might have heard farmers competing society in different parts of the country maybe marathwada maybe any other state now why does it happen probably the answer is we haven't given dignity to the labor when we are going to work and follow the notions scientific notions stated in constitution that is a question and of course we must have to stress on the education that imbibes the scientific temperament in our people and i think that will definitely make us to wake and it will take us to the world of science when you go to the different places you see people polluting nature mother nature rivers and if you come to nasik and if you visit godavari you will find the truth that people visiting temples of course do pollute nature that must have to be stopped somewhere these are the references uh from where you can get more information uh and i would like you to uh, use these references if you want any further detail and any other information finally i would like you to go and listen this poem it's a wonderful poem that is a message by ravnath tagore that he wants us to follow science let us see what he has to say in the poem one minute where the mind is without fear and the head is held high where the world has not been broken up into fragments where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom my father let my country awake ye mere vatan ke ho masoom vatan ke ho my father let my country awake now we move on to the last phase so what is the message that ravnar tagore is giving here the message is let us move on to the new realms of the scientific world with human bondage towards each other for the better indian civilization where you don't have any caste system where there is no chaturvarna vyavastha where there is no gender discrimination all are equal Thank you very much.